Ladies and gentlemen, a good evening to you. Four times today, Adam Spies, Julius, and Ethel Rosenberg appealed their sentence of death, and four times they were unsuccessful. They will be executed tonight, probably within the next half hour, the first husband and wife to die in the electric chair. Inside the stone walls of Sing Sing Prison, the Rosenbergs wait all day for word of their fate. It's now more than two years since they were first sentenced to die for organizing atomic espionage for Russia. Rabbi Irving Kozlow, a prison chaplain, goes in. He will not leave until after the execution, which is being held before sundown because the setting of the sun this Friday marks the beginning of the Holy Sabbath in the Jewish calendar. A matron, Mamie Creighton, comes out after seeing Ethel Rosenberg. She says the woman refuses to believe she's going to die, insists she is innocent. State troopers surround the prison to prevent demonstrations. Again, there are none. The hours pass slowly. Julius Rosenberg, now 35, his wife Ethel, now 37, married 14 years in one day, parents of two boys, tonight dined on hard-boiled eggs, macaroni salad, and tea. There was no time for the usual last meal. Their fate is decided in Washington. And here is that story from David Brinkley. In these last minutes before the Rosenbergs are electrocuted at Sing Sing Prison, here's how in Washington today their attorneys went through the last possible legal maneuvers to save them. It began at noon at the Supreme Court. Normally quiet, but today surrounded by groups of the curious. The court met at noon. At 12.06, it announced a decision to end the Rosenbergs' stay of execution. That was a stay granted two days ago by Justice Douglas. That seemed to be the end, but it wasn't. Their attorneys promptly asked for another stay while they appealed to President Eisenhower again for clemency. The court said it would consider it. Meanwhile, the lobbyists who came to Washington to work for the Rosenbergs kept up their parade in front of the White House. People riding by in automobiles shouted and asked why they didn't go to Russia. But there was no other disorder, so the police left them alone. They even sang a little song somebody wrote especially for this occasion but the picketing and singing did them no good because at the Supreme Court by this time, the government's lawyers, having won their case, were leaving. The court had refused again to delay the execution. A few minutes later, Emanuel Block, chief counsel, came out, read us a telegram he had sent to the president. For sake of American tradition, prestige, and influence, urge redress for Rosenberg. Demand you be afforded sufficient time to consider this serious matter. The president's answer came quickly. Here it is, read by a White House press officer. The following is part of a statement just issued by the president of the United States. I am convinced that the only conclusion to be drawn from the history of this case is that the Rosenbergs have received the benefit of every safeguard which American justice can provide. There is no question in my mind that their original trial and a long series of appeals constitute the fullest measure of justice and due process of law. Throughout the innumerable complications and technicalities of this case, no judge has ever expressed any doubt that they committed most serious acts of espionage. Accordingly, only most extraordinary circumstances could warrant executive intervention in the case. When democracy's enemies have been judged guilty of a crime as horrible as that of which the Rosenbergs were convicted, when the legal processes of democracy have been marshaled to their maximum strength to protect the lives of convicted spies, when in their most solemn judgment the tribunals of the United States have adjudged them guilty and the sentence just, I will not intervene in this matter. When it appeared that she had received enough electricity to kill an ordinary person and, and had received the exact amount that had killed her husband. The doctors went over and pulled down the cheap prison dress, a little dark green printed job, and placed the stethoscope, stetho, I can't say it, placed the stethoscopes uh, to her and then looked around, at, looked at each other rather dumbfounded and seemed surprised that she was not dead. Believing she was dead, the attendants had taken off the ghastly strappings and electrodes and the black belts and so forth. 
And these had to be readjusted again, and, and she was given more electricity, which started again that kind of a ghastly plume of smoke that rose from her head and went up against the skylight uh, overhead. After two more of those jolts, uh, Ethel Rosenberg uh, had met a maker. She'll have a lot of explaining to do, too.